uh, we start now officially. <laughs> A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Director CSR CLRI, I extend a very warm welcome to one and all present here for this lecture, which is on a very important topic, LWG tannery of the future and traceability capacity building across the global leather industry. May I now request Dr. KJ Sriram, Director Central Leather Research Institute to welcome the gathering and also to offer his remarks. Morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, first of all, my thanks to Vinicia for having readily agreed uh, to this uh, one hour plus uh, discussion meeting that we thought we will have. Uh, the idea uh, for the whole meeting was because uh, that India has started planning big. We now have a system or the uh, highest level of office of the government wanting to plan for 2047 for this sector. Uh, so when we plan at that level, we also need to make sure that uh, the uh, trade or the technology elements of the trade are well in tune with what is required for this industry to grow to whatever that we are committing uh, in the days to come. So having said that, uh, CLRA thought it ideal that we should just not be talking technology or uh, sustainable processing, this, that, that we commonly do. But let us also talk about things which are uh, very close to the industry's needs. So this is the first one among that uh, series, because once we get to know from LWG itself as what is the requirements for uh, such things, then both the institute and the industry can work together and see how we can meet those requirements. So we can also plan along with them as to how to take this forward as well. So these are some small things which we thought uh, we can start off, work together. Industry and CLRA has always been associated together in almost everything that we work, uh, do in India. But we also now need to do something more by, uh, vibrantly. And this is the first step towards it. So having said that, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you who are here. Uh, we already have about 46 uh, people who have joined in with just the time being 401. And I hope by the time we go into the lecture, we would have uh, touched a reasonably very good number. And uh, I hope that each and every one of you would benefit uh, from this uh, talk. Uh, I'm not very sure whether we would have the time to take all the questions, but uh, what we may do is to take about four or five questions at the end of the talk. And then uh, you can mail, your, mail in your uh, questions to us or uh, put it in the chat box. And we will try to get you the uh, inputs from uh, Venetia after the talk as well. So this would be the way uh, that we would uh, move forward. Uh, so with that few words, I once again welcome each and every one of you and the speaker in particular. And uh, I leave it now the floor to Nishad to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your words of welcome and also for highlighting about the significance of this lecture. The speaker for today's talk is Ms. Vanessa Prane. Ms. Vanessa joined LWG as a traceability project manager in September 2021 and is responsible for managing LWG's work on traceability of leather, including developing the chain of custody for LWG. Vanessa has a wealth of commercial passion and sustainability experience gained through working for organizations, including the Fab Trade Foundation, Control Union, and Historic Futures. And she is a specialist in sustainable materials, global sourcing, certification, and traceability systems. Over to you, ma'am. That's great. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Minimize. Sorry, just one second. Right, okay, there we go. So good afternoon, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be with you here today. And thank you so much to the Central Leather Research <laughs> Institute for the invitation to present at this lecture. 
So as um, Nishad said, I am Vanessa Brain and I'm the Traceability Project Manager of the Leather Working Group. As some of you may already be familiar with the Leather Working Group, but I'm pleased to be able to present to you today our Tannery of the Future programme and our approach to traceability. So to start with, I'd like to give you a brief introduction about the Leather Working Group and provide some context about both the Tannery of the Future programme and our work on traceability. And as was said in the introduction, we'd be very happy to take questions at the end of the session. The Leather Working Group has grown significantly since we were first founded in 2005 into an independent not-for-profit organisation providing a really definitive voice for the leather industry. Just going to move that, sorry. Our main focus has always been on conducting environmental audits of leather manufacturers, but the scope of this has grown over time with our audit now evolving to be a much more holistic assessment covering all elements of environmental, social and governance compliance. There are over 1,100 certified facilities in 55 countries around the world, and these represent an estimated 25% of global finished leather production. And at LWG, we're really committed to promote the positive aspects of leather through both accurate me metrics, data-driven insights, support supporting the development of supply chain transparency and due diligence, and credible ESG certification. So last year, we saw our membership grow to be 1,500 members, which was a really significant milestone that we passed. The growth in this membership, we are seeing continue to grow from members right across the whole leather supply chain. The majority of our members are made up of certified members who gain their membership by being audited by one of the independent LWG approved auditors with the balance of membership representing mainly brands and retailers, as well as suppliers to the leather industry. We now have well over 200 brand and retailer members from right around the world. There's just a few examples here of some of the logos of the brands and the retailers that we work with. And as a membership led organization, LWG provides a really important bridge between brands and leather manufacturers. We really listen very closely to our members to understand their needs and translate that into a roadmap that can drive positive change in the industry. And it's important that this is both realistic and achievable and that primarily it's achieved through de the development and evolution of the LWG audit. Many companies decide to join LWG for a range of benefits, which include the ability to communicate about their commitment to responsible leather sourcing, to gain access to data and metrics about their supply chain, and to support them to make specific claims within our guidelines on products that qualify. Secondly, to gain access to the LWG community and resources, to understand the leather supply chain more deeply, to manage their risks, and to make informed sourcing decisions. And then finally, to have a voice in the industry and participate in helping to form the future direction and activities for LWG. In addition to our membership, LWG has worked in collaboration and continues to work in collaboration with many different organisations on a wide range of topics. And there's a huge amount of value in these partnerships, really adding insight and expertise into our respective joint missions, ensuring that there's not duplication of efforts, providing alignment, which ultimately is all helping to drive more impactful change. I just want to pick out just a couple of examples of the types of collaboration and work that we're doing with some of these organisations. So the first being with the National Wildlife Federation and the World Wildlife Fund. They're both long-standing partners of ours, and we work very closely with them on a range of topics, but specifically traceability, and more specifically on um, efforts to work towards due diligence to guard against deforestation within the leather supply chain. These are really critical partnerships as we work towards our overall goal from LWG for there to be 100% deforestation and conversion-free leather supply chains. 
and also Solidaridad. They're a partner of ours on our Tannery, the Future programme, which I'll be talking to you about more today. So LWG is committed to drive and promote responsible leather sourcing, especially with the rise in the use of synthetic alternatives being used as a replacement for leather. It's even more important to promote the really positive aspects of responsibly manufactured leather in being a natural and renewable material. It's a crucial topic that companies and stakeholders need to consider as we work towards meeting our collective climate goals. And our philosophy is to drive continuous improvement in the industry, including all actors, no matter where they are on their journey. For those that are not yet certified, we run the Tannery of the Future programme, and this works as a stepping stone towards certification. While those who are certified need to constantly maintain their high standards and also make further improvements according to our evolving requirements. Two important elements that complement the LWG audit are access to accurate and verified data and supply chain transparency. We're currently building and developing our LWG supplier scorecard. This will provide the ability for a greater transparency of LWG audit metrics between brands and their leather manufacturers. And this will be enabled through the membership area of our LWG website. This information is really crucial and important to support companies to accurately measure their footprint and work towards meeting their science-based targets, which we're increasingly seeing brands committing to. Then developing traceability and building a fully transparent supply chain is a key priority for us. This transparency is critically important for companies to be able to carry out due diligence in their supply chains and also to manage their risks. And I'll be speaking further in detail about our approach to this a little bit later. So next I'd like to go into more detail on the LWG audit programme itself. So the LWG scope has gone through a significant evolution recently, evolving, as I've mentioned, from being an environmentally focused audit to being a holistic ESG audit. It now covers all elements of responsible leather manufacturing, including environmental management, material traceability, chemical management, governance, and also social responsibility for the first time. Looking at the global reach of LWG, we have audited sites in 55 countries around the world, as shown on this map here, with 77% of these being based in six key countries, which are India, Italy, China, Brazil, Spain and Turkey. So now to look in a bit of detail at the LWG audit tools. So to address the complexity of the leather value chain, we've developed different multiple audit tools with four distinct audit standards. As a first step towards certification, the Tannery of the Future self-assessment tool is available for leather manufacturers. It's completely free and it ensures inclusivity, providing the tools and resources for capacity building in the leather industry. Those those who join the Tanner of the Future programme will be able to join the LWG network of global brands, suppliers and leather manufacturers. And through this, they will have a two year free affiliate membership to LWG. The next step is certification with the LWG leather manufacturing audit being the flagship audit. Additionally, there is our trader audit and the commissioning manufacturer and subcontractor audits being the most recent to have been added to our auditing portfolio. I'd now like to go into a little bit more detail about the LWG Tannery of the Future programme. The Tannery of the Future programme is governed by a group of dedicated volunteers, including brands, chemical suppliers and leather manufacturers as well as our Tannery of the Future partner, Solidaridad. It's built as an educational self-assessment questionnaire to help lend the manufacturers work towards improvement and has been digitized so it can be translated online. So now how can leather manufacturers use this assessment? Leather manufacturers can use the tool to assess their own performance, 
identify where they can improve and see how ready they are to undergo an LWG audit. They can also use it to assess the performance of their direct leather suppliers. And additionally, they can use it to show their customers their current performance, as well as their commitment to improvements in the future. And then how can brands use the assessment? We recommend that brands use the Tannery of the Future as a tool to drive continual improvement in their supply chain by asking their suppliers to complete the self-assessment. This forms part of a process for brands to map their supply chain and really build engagement with their suppliers. Best practice we recommend for brands are that firstly they set targets for their leather suppliers to encourage time-bound improvements either through maintaining LWC LWG certification or via the LWG Tannery of the Future programme for those who are not yet certified. The next step would be to expand those targets to include indirect suppliers and then monitor the progress of their suppliers through the LWG member area within our website. So to look a little bit more detail about the assessments and the sections it's broken down into, there are three assessment sections in the Tannery of the Future self-assessment. The first is a critical evaluation and it's used to assess if a leather manufacturer is operating in a safe and responsible manner. It can be used as a pre-audit checklist in critical areas of the LWG audit where performance would lead potentially to an automatic failure during an on-site audit. The second considers good practice, covering areas of operational performance that leather manufacturers should consider if they are striving for excellence. These are aligned with areas of the LWG audit that would improve a facility's overall score and rating. And then the third looks at social elements that a responsible leather manufacturer should be implementing or working towards to ensure a high level of social responsibility. So I'll now take you through um, the assessment formats, there are two formats available. There's a PDF version that can be downloaded from the LWG web website. It can be shared and printed and used within a tannery in that format. Or alternatively, a leather manufacturer may register on the LWG training portal and complete the assessment online. And then share their commitment to work towards improvement directly with their customers in the member area. And later on, I'll show you how that um, registration within the portal actually looks and works. So now to just look at a little bit more detail of each of those three main sections. So the first section looking at critical evaluation. So this is really aligned with the key sections of the Leather Working Group Leather Manufacturer Audit Protocol. And as I've mentioned, it can be used as a pre-audit checklist on the really critical areas of the audit. And potentially these are key areas where if there were, were to be poor performance, it could lead to an automatic failure. So the key sections that this will be looking at will be ensuring that there are the correct operating permits in place. There'll be an assessment of production data for material that's being purchased and then passing through any facility. There will be an assessment of material traceability and we'll be talking a little bit more about the detail of that later. They'll be looking at, there'll be questions around the environmental management systems. There'll be an assessment of restricted substances, ensuring that there is compliance with Chrome 6 management. There'll be questions and data requested around energy consumption, water consumption, and also looking at air and noise emissions. There'll be an assessment of waste management and effluent treatment and then ensuring that there are adequate health, safety and emergency procedures in place. And there'll also be aspects looking at both chemical management and operations management. Then in the second section, looking at good practice, this covers areas of operational performance that leather manufacturers should consider if they're really striving for that excellence. And it's aligned with the environmental audit protocol to improve a facility's overall score and potential rating that they might get if they were to go on to be certified. So the aspects that this is looking at is the manufacturing processes. So looking at how measuring, equip, measuring instruments and removal of dispos and disposal of salt is managed. At the beam house, it's looking at processes that measure chemicals and the reuse of solid waste. 
in post tanning processes it's looking at the control of buffing operations within finishing it's looking at the monitoring of solvent use and keeping mixing areas clean and then it's ensuring that any complaints and public relations in relation to any potential noise or odor complaints are dealt with in an adequate way so the third section looking at resp social responsibility is um, ensuring that all um, participants in the um, programme are working in a responsible way and that they're implementing and working towards a high level of social responsibility. So this is looking at covering all of the international labour organisation fundamental conventions ensuring that there is equality and opportunity and fair treatment of workers, that there is no forced or compulsory labour, that the age of workers is in compliance with local laws and um, internationally established recognised um, levels, that there is the opportunity for worker representation, that there are the co correct wages and benefits paid, and that working hours are not excessive. It's also looking to ensure that there are green grievance mechanisms and a worker voice and that overall that there is an ethical business behaviour. On this point about social responsibility, just to point out with it being a new part within our overall audit protocol, this is working in um, collaboration with um, third party audits, auditing bodies that specialise in social compliance and ensuring that there is no duplication of efforts. So if a site already has a social audit that has taken place, provided that's um, in compliance with the um, types of social audits that we are um, accepting, and this is detailed on, on our website, then um, those third party assessments can be submitted. So now to look at the benefits of joining the LWG Tannery of the Future programme. So all, all leather manufacturers who take part in this will get a two year free membership to LWG as an affiliate membership. So this will provide access to all member resources and allow them to join LWG events and be part of the global LWG network for that two year period. They'll be able to demonstrate their commitment to improvements to their customers and their customers will be able to view their status via the member area of the LWG website. They'll also have access to educational resources to learn about responsible leather production, as well as best practice for environmental and social performance. And finally, they'll be provided with resources to prepare to have an LWG audit with their, when, for when they're ready to take that next step. So how to register? Registering on the LWG portal is very simple. Um, you just need to navigate to the portal web page that's shown on this slide and register by filling out the required fields. Once the request is submitted, the LWG management team will review it and approve the registration, and then you'll receive a confirmation by email and be able to log in and start the self-assessment. So I've got a couple of slides here that show screenshots of how the portal actually looks. Um, it's probably important to point out that we are very soon going to be relaunching our website so it might look just slightly different this one shows the landing page where you can register and also sign in but the sort of core um, functionality will remain the same in the new look and feel of our new website this second page shows you the online version of the tannery the future self-assessment so you can com you can complete and save each section separately so if you need to um, go away to find more information or you want to complete it at a late, later time, you can continue and track your progress um, in the progress bar. There are also many resources available. And once you've completed the self-assessment, you'll receive a report of your results and there'll be an evaluation of your performance. So now to go back to the core pillars of LWG certification and how we focus and assess traceability. So overall, as I've mentioned, 
traceability really is a strategic priority. And we've got a couple of quotes here from um, some of our brand members. The first, that traceability or origin is the key for sustainability improvements in all sourcing. And the other, with the changing legislative landscape, traceability will be crucial. So we really see this as a requirement across the board that having traceability and enabling supply chain transparency is the number one priority for our members. Legislation and regulation across many countries is increasing related to what and how claims can be made related to sustainability. And many are focusing in on specific to topics such as tackling deforestation and carbon emissions. So with this as the context, building robust traceability systems and requirements is really critical. The ability for members of LWG to make verified product claims is a clear goal that we're working towards, which ultimately will be able to support claims about the origin of material and make assurances about issues such as deforestation and animal welfare compliance. We're working to develop our traceability work in three areas. So the first through phasing developments and increasing the requirements within the audit protocol itself. And the second through industri industry engagement, both with our members and with external stakeholders where appropriate. Then through developing tools and resources to support members to implement the requirements of LWG and also understand the wider issues that traceability is working to address. So before we look at the detail of what our traceability requirements are, I first want to give you an overview of the journey and timeline of our work on traceability to date. Traceability has always been a really key consideration since the inception of LWG, and indeed through participating in becoming audited, it's the very first part of providing visibility of an organization's role within the leather supply chain. The first specific requirements to assess traceability were introduced in 2008 into 2009, with the requirement to assess traceability to a slaughterhouse being included. Over time, we've included aspects of traceability requirements into our other categories of standards, such as the trader standard. Then incrementally, other parts have been introduced, including incentivizing physical marking of hides and skins. We then set up our traceability working group, followed by the expansion of categories for assessment of traceability in the latest version of our audit protocol, P7, which was launched last year. Then looking at both current and future work, we'll be looking to further increase requirements with the phased introduction of traceability to become a mandatory requirement within the audit and developing the chain of custody to enable monitoring of material right up until a brand receives the finished goods and enabling verified claims about a finished product. Then on to our longer term goal for all LWG leather to be 100% deforestation and conversion free by 2030. So now to look a little bit more detail about how we actually assess traceability under our latest audit protocol P7. So there are three aspects that will look at traceability. So the first is to be considered is under production data. And this is where we assess where the material has been sourced from to understand whether these sources are also been certified and therefore manufacturing in a responsible way. This works to drive adoption of LWG certification across the full supply chain and enable visibility of the chain of custody for these stages. Then under incoming traceability, we developed the scope of this to recognize four different categories for assessment, depending on the nature and location of a supply chain. And we'll look at the detail of this a little bit later. Also within an incoming traceability, the principle of physical marking for skins or hides as the means of assessing traceability is preferred and incentivized. We have the requirement for additional evidence of due diligence monitoring where raw materials are sourced from regions at high risk of deforestation. And 100% of exotic skins must be able to be proven to come from legal sources. Then the last part assesses outgoing traceability from a facility. And this is to incentivize traceability downstream of a certified site, ensuring that there are systems in, and processes in place 
during manufacture to provide transparency of which sources these materials have come from. And this section also has specific requirements for when splits are being produced, as this can mean that any marking might be on, a grain, on the grain side of the leather, so lost, so splits must then be marked. So then on to focus on the incoming traceability section requirements. And this is where we've really seen the biggest change under the latest version of the audit. And the main part to highlight here is that we've expanded the scope of how traceability requirements are assessed. To look at assessing traceability to the slaughterhouse within commercial context, context where there is a defined slaughterhouse. And then the ability to assess traceability to a region in non-commercial contexts where predominantly the type of slaughter is informal and prevalent across countries such as India. We then, as I've uh, noted on, on the last slide, that, have, that we have moved to really incentivise physical marking as the preferred method of traceability. And then there are the additional requirements for additional evidence of monitoring where there is risk of illegal deforestation and conversion of natural landscapes and that 100% of exotic materials must be sourced legally. So now to look at the four types of traceability that are recognised and can be assessed within the audit. So the first is physical traceability. So this is the preferred method of traceability and in the commercialised context what we're looking for here is that this physical marking provides details of which slaughterhouse the material has come from and if the origin is either Brazil or Paraguay that the date of slaughter is also required to be included in that physical marking on the skin or the hide. The next type is documented. And again, the requirement is that documents must be able to identify the origin of slaughter for the material. These documents must cover entire consignments from the same name slaughterhouse. Then traceability to a group of slaughterhouses has been created to enable assessment of part process materials and when splits are being produced. So where a tannery may be indirectly taking in material from a number of slaughterhouses or tanneries and then sorting or grading these part process hides or skins, it means that they may overall know which group of slaughterhouses that materials come from, but not at an individual level. Likewise, when splits are produced, the grain side will have had the physical marking, but as the splits are produced, this is then lost. So it's important to point out that at this stage, splits must then be physically marked to identify the immediate supplier, therefore the supplier of the splits for the downstream movement of the material. Then lastly, regional traceability has been created which is relevant where non-industrial slaughter is prevalent and therefore no slaughterhouse involved. And we're going to look in more detail in this now. So this new category to assess traceability to a region has been launched as part of our P7 protocol. And it allows for the assessment of hides and skins that have come from suppliers where their main premises has been geo-referenced so capturing both the latitude and longitude coordinates for their location. This is applicable where no commercial slaughterhouse is involved in the supply chain. As well as the geo-reference for the supplier, the catchment area for each supplier, so the operating radius that that particular supplier is collecting skins and hides from, must also be stated. An auditor will then review those documents to verify these supplier details as part of the auditing process. So we'll look now at um, a worked example that will um, hopefully explain this more. And obviously we will be happy to take questions at the end. So this is a fictional example of um, a tannery of Best Tannery Company based in Ranipet. So the table shows us that this Best Tannery Company is sourcing from four suppliers in four different locations. I'm not going to say the names just in case I get the pronunciation wrong. So we then see in the third column that there are details of their georeference locations. Then in the next column, they have their associated catchment area or collection radius for the hides or skins that they're collecting. The next column is optional, but it's very useful data to be able to have the distance of those suppliers from the, from the um, tannery included. 
And then the last two data fields show the number of skins provided and the proportion of the total input that each of these supplier represents of the total inputs that that tannery is sourcing. So to summarize the information that's required for traceability to a region to be assessed, the details are as follows. Any site preparing to be audited must fully document their own traceability procedure and have a record of the traceability procedure of any of their suppliers, particularly if they're purchasing part process material. There must be detailed and accurate records available of all suppliers used during the audit period that's being under assessment and the details of their location with geo references and also that collection catchment area that they're working within must be captured. If a tannery is sourcing part process material, they'll need to know whether their suppliers are LWG certified. They'll need to also know what their associated traceability um, percentages and the type of traceability that their suppliers are working with. And if they've been audited under our latest protocol, they will have a, what's called a sourcing factor that they will need to request from their suppliers. So lastly, I'd like to introduce you to um, a new traceability platform that some of our members and, and yours may be aware of already um, and involved with the development of in being the GeoTrace system. This has been developed as a solution to drive traceability into leather supply chains, specifically in India. The system is due to go live very shortly and it utilizes the Government of India's goods and service tax records as an infrastructure for data collection. So as you'll be aware, e-way bills are issued for tra transactions that fall above the designated threshold, which is a very highly accurate way to capture and monitor the material uh, movement of material. So the new system enables um, both leather traders and tanneries to register and enter their details about transactions and, and movements of their materials to trace it. This data is then certified by chartered accountants and it's been built to be a really simple interface for people to work with. Um, so those who are interested, um, we would, um, I'm sure you already know Isra um, from Farida Tannery and his details are here if you would like to get any more details about the status and, and the plans for this service. I'm sure he'd be very happy to give you some more details. So lastly, um, I just want to give a quick summary of our future plans for traceability. So we're looking at how we will develop and move traceability to be a mandatory requirement. It's important to point out that this is going to be a phased approach. And the first focus of this will be to develop requirements related to regions at high risk of deforestation. We will be looking at how we develop regional traceability requirements. And we have our traceability working group, which any members of LWG are very welcome to join. And specifically to focus on this topic, we have recently set up our regional traceability scheme. And again, this is open to all members. We'll then be looking to develop the chain of custody and we'll be looking to pilot the approach for this during this year with a view to rolling this out into next year and beyond. The priority of this is to enable verified product level claims and tradition and transition the LWG audit to be a site-based audit to certifying the leather that is coming out of sites that are um, being audited. Transactional level data will be captured as part of our chain of custody development and we'll also be looking to explore collaborations on how we capture data for traceability within the regional context, such as collaborating on the GeoTrace platform. So this brings me to the end of my slides. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your very kind attention um, and ask if there are any questions on any of the subjects that we have covered today. So I think if I pass back to Nishad, you will. Yes, thank you so very much for a very insightful lecture. And in fact, you you know, from detailing the audit tools used to connect the supply chain and to increase the transparency, 
to the various sections of the audit to the traceability. I think you covered the entire gamut of it. So thank you so very much. And uh, since you, uh, you know, mentioned about Mr. Isra Ahmed and uh, his initiatives, so may I now request uh, Mr. Isra Ahmed to offer his remarks? Thank you, Nishad. Uh, thank you, Vanessa. And uh, <clears throat> good evening to everybody. As uh, Vanessa had just mentioned, uh, this is from Ifilmia. The, the GeoTrace is something that the Filmia team, which is, uh, you know, our president is chairman is there, Mr. Vijayan and uh, Mr. Sendil, uh, all of us have put together, have worked on this uh, GeoTrace. And I think with, with <clears throat> I would just ask Mr. Aslam if he's there to also put the uh, email address, his, his email address, so that it's be easier for everyone to connect regarding this. But I think uh, uh, it was a great presentation that we've just seen from Vanessa. And we all understand, and I think Vanessa, you will agree with India being having the highest number of LWG um, uh, certified tanneries. We are, I mean, people in India do understand and value uh, the working with LWG certification. And I think as Ifilmia also, we have pushed uh, very hard from the very beginning for many years, trying to get more and more people involved in um, LWG and trying to get them certified and working closely with LWG to get them certified. And I think it is, it is really uh, changing the way that our tanneries are and they are perceived as well at what, what, what it used to be before and what it is, it is a, it is a moving target. And I think um, with all the new traceability norms and what is required from our customers, you know, I think uh, GeoTrace will be very helpful for uh, the for the for the members who are here to to do the traceability documentations and stuff like that. So we are trying to make it uh, a foolproof system where everything is drawn from the um, GST network. So that you know, any but any any detail of any members coming in, any, any supplies coming in from anywhere in the country is clearly documented. And then um, I, I don't know if I I mean maybe at a later date we will be launching it. Uh, we will be launching GeoTrace in about a week or ten days time in one of our meetings uh, that is there for uh, Ifilmia. So once we do that, we will come out and make a better, bigger presentation to the whole group about it. You know, along with Dr. Sriram. I'm sure uh, you know we will try and do this together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Isra. Uh, Mr. Vijay, would you like to offer your remarks, sir? Uh, good evening to everyone. It's a very good presentation. As uh, our regional chairman, Mr. Ramas said, very shortly we are going to launch that uh, GeoTrace. The, we are all we are working very hard and bringing the things and all. All trials, pre-trials are already over. Already over. Just uh, launching is pending. And uh, Sendil Kumar is uh, and uh, my secretary Sendil Kumar and uh, all are working very hard in this regard. Thank you for presentation. It's a very nice presentation. The Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have uh, now few questions. Vanessa uh, posted on the chat box. Uh, this is from Mr. Aspi Padar from uh, Vira Tanneries. Traceability of sheep and goat skins for India. How is LWG going to go forward on it? Um, well, so the so the latest version of the protocol with the um, requirement, the ability for ass assessment to a region is the is the relevant um most relevant kind of category for um sheep at sheep and goat skins um we've worked with um israel and other partners through our traceability working group to look at case studies of how those collection methods work um, in india and um develop those requirements specifically in line um with how um, the various collectors work at the different tiers of the supply chain. So it will be the combination of understanding who, um, who those suppliers are that a tannery is working with, the numbers of them, and then understanding um, the actual location that that supplier is based in. 
and then having details about what collection radius they are then working with. And as much detail that can be provided, the, the better. Um, currently, those requirements are um, a, a, a not a, they are a scored part of the standard and the audit, but they are not a mandatory requirement. And it's important to flag that we are looking at how we will develop that to, to be a mandatory requirement, but that is a, is a later phase of our, of our work. The first priority um, and, and mandatory level for this will be looking at um, linking to regions at high risk of deforestation. So I think it's important that our stakeholders who are developing this type of traceability and working with systems like GeoTrace will really facilitate that and enable that, that um, you know, we will work with you as partners to understand kind of how that rollout is going and work to support those mechanisms to share that data with the rest of the supply chain. Um, so I think that any change to make that a mandatory part of the standard and potentially affect the metal rating is something that's much more longer term and will be done in, in a partnership approach. So I think it's important to point that out. Yeah, I think you kind of answered the second question which uh, oh. the other person had put. Uh, well, it is uh, Robin Das Gupta and uh, he says European buyers are asking for traceability certification of letter made in India tanners from local raw material so related to the one which you answered this yes. system will take time so is the lwg doing seminars in europe to inform customers of problems in india for traceability and the time it will take to come into play yes absolutely i mean we work we work very closely with all the different stakeholder groups that lwg represents and um our brand members there's obviously different challenges that um, you know, depending on the sector that they're working in, um, you know, we represent every different category that leather is used within. So um, the majority of our membership covers um, those producing you know, footwear and, and garments, but very much um, also we're seeing growth within automotive leather and also um, furniture and upholstery. Um, so, you know, the, the, the needs and requirements of those stakeholders can be slightly different, but I think the principles of brands um, within, within, say, Europe and, and other regions wanting to understand where the materials have come from is definitely something that we are supporting and working with them. And LWG is, is obviously that place for them to get that visibility of what standards are being achieved by by their suppliers and as i was mentioning the next steps of our work to look to develop the chain of custody will be to extend requirements to those stages where the finished products are being made so that then the claims that that end brand can make will be about the actual product rather than it being more a general claim which is what we allow at the moment about their support for responsible leather production thank you uh, the next question is from mr subramaniam swaminathan uh, he's asking is there any scoring relaxation is there in purchase time of 6.7 protocol but audit done through 7.1 um so could you, could you just say the question again? And this might, I've got my colleague, yeah. um, Mark, our technical manager on the line. He he might be better placed to answer that if it's about the scoring. Um, yeah, so perhaps uh, if you could read the question again and then Mark, yes. maybe if uh, you want Mark, to. Uh, Mark, the question is, is any scoring relaxation is there in purchase time of 6.7 protocol, but audit done through 7.1? Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, no, we have um, we have tried to arrange the the scoring mechanism for for seven point one to take into account traceability. Um, the intention with the protocol is to actually make the situation a bit more stringent. In as much as currently with traceability, it's not a critical section. We will be making this a critical section in future. And part of the reason for introducing the new traceability definitions is to allow people to be able to gain a score. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, the other question uh, we have is from Vishad uh, himself. Uh, can you please explain more about deforestation area, which part it is it? The deforestation. Um Sure, yes. I mean, we, we have um, defined within the current audit protocol um, that there are additional due diligence monitoring requirements related to um, both Brazil and Paraguay. So this is looking at the Amazon and the Paraguayan Chaco. Um, but when we're looking at how we move forward with, with the um, definition and scope for that, we're certainly looking at how we're going to extend that globally. And this is where our work in partnership with both NWF and WWF is really important because they're obviously the experts in, in this area. Um, there are other deforestation fronts which are defined um, potentially within regions such as Indonesia and also in parts of Australia, um, where we'll be looking to see how we would um, extend any due diligence monitoring that, that, that would be required. Um, but again, obviously, we'll be working in, in partnership with those NGOs that are that are experts in that area. But the, the sort of initial focus is, is very much on um, South America, but we are considering um, deforestation globally um, to ensure that you know any potential links with leather supply chains and, and leather production is is captured in the future kind of evolution of, of, of how those requirements work. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, the next question is uh, from Dr. Chandrasekhar. Uh, he asks, in India, we have, say, goat skins from Jammu, Bengal, and Tamil Nadu, which have very unique features. How are we going to account for this? Also, if there are a mix of these materials, the case could be more intense. So, with regards to traceability. Um, well, this is this is where the, um, the the breakdown of the information that regional traceability um, will assess is is important. Um, so, obviously, if there are materials mixed materials coming from different um, origins, then we would look to request that detail about you know, the breakdown of which those. Um, sources are that a, that a tannery is working with and that would need to cover the the valid audit period so within that two-year assessment period yeah thank you uh the next question is from uh, shabuddin of kh exports so uh, his question is there are no part processed sheep goat suppliers with lwg how can one get gold in this case Um, Mark, do you want to take that one? Okay. Uh, well, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, if you're working with, if your starting material is part processed sheep or goat, um, then unless your suppliers have LWG uh, certification themselves, it would be impossible, well nigh impossible to obtain an LWG rating. Within the protocol, we've designed the, the way the protocol works to make sure that the entire supply chain or the entire manufacturing chain, perhaps I should say, from start to finish is covered. So we can't have a situation, for example, where a tannery buys part processed material, but there's no assessment of what the environmental impact was on all the stages from the raw material up to that part processed condition. And really that's why we have in, in the hide sector so many wet blue tanners uh, from the United States, from Brazil, Argentina, Australia, et cetera, in the program, because it's, it's a necessary condition to ensure, as I say, that the environmental impacts of raw to part processed condition are covered. So I think the, the answer to that is that you, you really need to work with your suppliers in order to get them into the LWG program. In the hide sector, that was, that was done. So this is a little bit historic now, but obviously we had a similar situation in the hide sector some 10 years or so ago, when many of the 
the leather manufacturers in the LWG program were processing wet blue um, through to finished leather. Those leather manufacturers were based in places like China and, and Vietnam. Um, but LWG realized that the, the early stages of the process from raw to wet blue weren't covered. And that is why we changed the protocol to ensure that there is complete coverage. So that whether the tannery processes from raw through to finished leather, or whether they process from a part process condition through to finished leather, the entire manufacturing stage from the raw condition is covered. So again, in, in summary, to the as an answer to the question, you really need to be working with your suppliers to make sure that every, everything is covered. And you know, it, it's going to be the same issue with traceability for people in, in South America, uh, in Paraguay and Brazil, as Vanessa has just been talking about with deforestation. The, the people making leathers need to work with their suppliers to make sure that the, the impacts on the environment, um, social conditions, deforestation, whatever, are, are covered within the protocol. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mark. Uh, so if there are any uh, questions which from the viewers, we can take maybe one or two, or else we'll proceed for conclusions. Uh, yes, um, Nisha, yeah. can I ask a question? Yeah, please, please, please go yeah. ahead. Earlier there was um, uh, a talk that, you know, for the physical marking, we have the origin marking that we can understand that, you know, we can have it from a certain supplier and the origin. But then also we need to have a marking for the batch that is there. You know, let's say if we use a batch, we made a batch yesterday. So we have to have not only the origin, but also the batch card number uh, marked on the skin. This becomes a little challenging if you think about if we are buying this, let's say in wet blue from a wet blue supplier, and he has four or five letters on it. And then again, if I have to process it uh, in my tannery, then I have to add another batch number onto it. Then, you know, on a goat skin or a sheep skin, which is a three square feet or a four square feet leather, if you have so many markings, then you start to lose area. How do we deal with such a challenge? Mark, do you want to answer Isra? I'll have a go. Um, it's, it's correct that on smaller skins, the, the, the amount of area that becomes available for for putting more and more marks on does become more and more challenging. Um, however, we we do um, indicate that the skin needs to be marked. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be physically damaged by means of a, you know, like a stamp, a, a punch, etc. I've seen people who have been putting on um, ink jets, for example, there's a, a wet blue tannery in uh, Australia, who is using a, an inkjet type of printing approach to mark the skins. So by the time that it goes through all of the processes, the inkjet doesn't reduce the amount of available cutting area. Because for example, by the time you get to the end of the process, the, the inkjet is uh, either covered with, with the finish or you put the inkjet on the, the reverse side of the skin. We do have options within the, the protocol as well for marking systems which are or, or batch batches so that the, the travel card which accompanies the leather through the factory contains all the data. Um, it, we, we probably do need to refine certain aspects of manu batch manufacturing or the traceability through the, the, the tannery in order to take account of all of the different types of, of situation because the, the, the sort of problem that you're referring to with regard to uh, small skins applies probably even more so with exotics. Um, with exotics, for example, they are putting um, physical tabs on the skin because the skins need to be uh, uh, assessed against CITES, the, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. So there are different ways of, of doing um, this. Um, and I think probably in the first instance, it will be a documented based system because you can't damage the skin too much. And as the sections in the protocol become critical, because it's not a critical section at the moment, um, 
then we will evaluate what the responses are. Part of, the, part of the reason for not having it as a critical section right from the very outset is to gather the sort of experiences and the comments that you're making so that we can respond in a, in a much better way when we do eventually make it critical. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, uh, thank you for your uh, remarks. In fact, uh, Mr. Nachiappa also says, yes, physical marking incorporated in measuring uh, machine stamping can be a good solution. So thank you for those remarks. Uh, now, uh, will anybody from IFLIMA would like to present uh, about uh, this few trays? Mr. Sendhil, would you like to make a presentation? Anybody from Iflimia who would like to present or we go ahead? Mr. Isra? We will make a presentation once it's launched anyways. So we know we were not told that we had to make a presentation. So uh, we were not ready we for contacted it. actually, uh, I think yeah. director will respond to it. Okay. So actually, uh, Sindhil had uh, sent a few slides and Mr. Shafiq had spoken to me that uh, they will give us kind of trailer to it, the whole process today. Okay. Uh, so I was just looking for whether uh, Sindhil wants to do it now. Okay. Okay. Uh, if not, then we go forward. Okay. Yeah. I think there's one last question uh, sitting in the chat box. Uh, with that, we'll probably close this question and answer session. Uh, are there, this is from Arul S. Michael. Are there any way to audit or check facility? The LWG have to check the genuinity on the information a tannery gives on the traceable data. Um, Mark, it's probably best with your audit knowledge to, if you could mm -hmm. cover that one. Um. The, the area where I operate is generally South America, so I'm, I'm much more familiar with the, the South American systems, so Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, etc. But part of the, the role of the auditor is to assess the, the evidence presented, um, and that means that you need to consult external sources sometimes if necessary. So we don't necessarily rely just on what information is presented to us by the tannery um, on, on occasion uh, and wherever necessary, we would go directly to um, the, the original source material. Uh, and that would, that would apply for any, any aspect of, the, of the, the, the protocol, for example. The extent to which uh, an auditor might do that, I suppose, depends upon the the, the, the level and quality of the evidence being presented during the course of an audit, but certainly we do have a sort of effective third party checking systems. And we do do random in inspection visits of tanners as, as well. So we would potentially visit the tannery either remotely or in person, and we may require um, additional documentation in support of evidence which has already been presented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ma. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Vanessa. So I think uh, now I would uh, like to call upon my director uh, to present the concluding remarks. Uh, thank you, Nisha. Thank you, Vanessa, for that wonderful presentation. Thank you, Mark, for answering those uh, questions. Uh, friends, uh, CLRA would turn 75 in April. And uh, we have had a tremendous journey with the Indian leather industry and we hope that we can make it more vibrant uh, as we go forward. And uh, seminars such as this, where there is a common ground for trade and science to come together becomes very, very useful. CLRA looks forward to uh, activities like geotagging. In fact, to add the uh, BST Departments of Science and Technology's uh, document on manufacturing sector, actually as a part of Blue Sky Research, that is uh, research beyond 2035, uh, talks about why not tagging all our domestic animals as well, if we can do it for our tigers. So that was a kind of a mission for science and technology that was there. And uh, we hope that aspects such as traceability 
can be done both through science and through uh, trade related mechanisms. Uh, so in that sense, there is a lot which we can work together, the CLRI, the Indian leather industry, LWG, all of us can work together towards a responsible manufacturing. With that words, I thank every one of you uh, for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, thanks to LWG for having readily agreed to be part of this uh, whole program. And we hope to continue to interact with you constantly in the future. Uh, thanks, Nisha. Yeah. Thank you, one and all, for uh, joining us. Uh, special thanks to Ms. Vanessa and Mr. Marsh. So thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.